Good morning, everyone. It is the Thursday morning live stream. Today is October 8th. Uh, I had a little trouble going live on Facebook, so it's being recorded live, but you'll be watching it on Facebook and LinkedIn. I am Mitch Beinhacker, Beinhacker Law. I'm a business attorney in New Jersey. I work with entrepreneurs, startups, small business owners, family-owned businesses, partnered businesses, professionals um, throughout the area. You could also listen to my podcast, The Accidental Entrepreneur, available on Amazon Music, Google, Apple Spot, uh, Podcast, Spotify, and some other directories as well. And you can listen to me interview um, people all around the world, entrepreneurs, inventors, authors, social media influencers, all kinds of different people. Um, you can also catch, I was on a show yesterday about on, uh, called On Air Brands, my guys at PodMax Global. A little shout out to them. If you are looking to get involved in the podcast guesting business where you go out and put out your message and get some um, PR for your firm and your brand, they have an event on October 16th called PodMax Global. It's all virtual now. Um, it's a, uh, I don't remember the price, but for, for guests, you get to be a guest on three separate podcasts on the day. So it's next Friday. I think the deadline for registering is tomorrow at 5 p.m. I'll put a link in the show notes, but it is PodMax. I think it's PodMax Global or PodMax.co. So you can do a search for PodMax Global. Highly recommend it to anybody who's got a message and they want to get out there and get on podcasts. So I want to thank Eric and Josh and Devin and Lisa for having me on and talking about all the things I do for business owners and all the agreements that I write and helping them get their businesses straight. Today, I'm going to shift a little gears. I'm going to talk a little bit about estate planning and asset titling of assets. Um, the reason I'm doing that, I do a lot of estate planning for the business owners I work with, family-owned businesses, partnered businesses, because when you own a business and maybe you own real estate that goes with that business and you have agreements in place with partners and so forth, the design of your estate plan becomes extremely important and very integrated with the rest of the planning that goes on in your life, if you have children in the business, you have partners or whatever. And I, I come across a lot of situations where someone has a will, for example, and the dispositive provisions, the provisions that dispose of your assets, leaving them to different places, different people, don't coordinate with your business plan or your other assets. And in general, in general, other, the titling of other assets will always supersede your will. That's true for most agreements that you'll have, like a business agreement, and it's true for real estate, and it's true for beneficiary designations. So for example, if I own a, bil a building uh, with my partner, and it's held jointly with rights of survivorship, which by the way, very common in home ownership, you would own the property joint with rights of survivorship. Um, there's a specific titling for husband and wife or spouses called tenants by the entirety. If you see it on the deed to your house, that is a joint with rights of survivorship de designation for married couples. And what happens is when one of the people die, it automatically passes to the other person. So if your will says, in the example of a joint with rights of survivorship titled building, that when I die, I leave my share of the building to my children, that is not what's going to happen. The survivor of me and my partner is going to inherit and own the building by operation of law at my death. That is also true for uh, beneficiary designation. So if you have your spouse or your children, if your spouse has passed away or your spouse has signed a waiver to be the beneficiary of your IRAs, your 401ks, other pension and profit sharing plans, retirement accounts, the designation on the plan that's filed with the plan administrator will supersede your will. So for example, I, I do a lot of work for people where maybe their spouse has passed away and their children are beneficiaries and they want to have the asset, the account go into trust for certain reasons and maybe eventually be dealt out to the kids or maybe one of the kids is young or so forth. So their will says, take my retirement account and put it into a trust. And there are special trusts to take advantage of the tax law with um, retirement accounts. So make sure if you're talking to somebody that they know how to do those things and the, the, the ins and outs of those laws. Um, if the beneficiary designation of the account is, let's say, the three children directly, it will not go through the will. It'll avoid the estate. Now, the advantage is it avoids probate, not a big deal in New Jersey, but some states probate tends to be costly, but it also ties up the assets. The beneficiary designation avoids probate, doesn't avoid taxes necessarily, but it avoids probate. 
That is true for beneficiaries of life insurance. It's true uh, like for annuity contracts. If you've ever heard of the term pay on death, you can, you can put a pay on death designation with like a bank account or a securities account uh, on file with the institution that holds that account. Um, obviously, if you don't have one, it would go to your estate. So you want to make sure that you coordinate all those types of things. If you have a business agreement that requires or allows you to do certain things with your shares of the company, then that agreement is going to control. So if the shares say, if the business agreement, which is often common with like a buy-sell agreement, says that, you know, when I die, I leave my shares to, um, to my a partner or I direct that my partner buy out my share. So my estate gets cash, my wife or children get cash, and my partner then ends up owning the business outright. It's called a buy-sell arrangement. That will overcome the will. So if I put something in my will that changes that, that says, no, I leave my shares to my cousin, and he's going to end up in business with my partner, um, the will won't be controlling. The business agreement, unless it's deemed invalid for some reason, is going to um, be controlling. So it is very important that you are aware of and regularly review the beneficiary designations and the titling of your assets in coordination with your estate plan and in coordination with your business plan, succession planning, all those types of things. Very often you will run into or your insurance advisor, for example, might say to you, listen, um, let me review your beneficiary designations. And I would say probably eight out of 10 times that professional finds a mistake um, often just due to time, things have been overlooked. Uh, somebody was named a beneficiary and they're a minor, which is problematic too. So they, a life insurance company is not going to pay a million dollars to a minor child. They're going to hold it and you have to go to apply to court to get the money out and so forth until they're, uh, I believe 16. So you want to take it out and take a look at everything and, you know, make sure that you're, that you're on top of everything. Now there is one other titling of, um, real estate that would allow you to leave your share to someone else. It's called tenants in common. So for example, let's say you own a three family house and you own it with your two siblings as tenants in common. You can leave your share to someone else. Okay. Now, maybe you have another agreement between your siblings that says, um, you know, uh, we agree to sell it to each other, like a buy-sell agreement or so forth. No, no, everybody agrees not to transfer. That's a different story. But tenants in common is a, is a uh, severable form of ownership. So I can sever my, my ownership in the, in the uh, property by transferring it to someone else. So that's another thing. You want to make sure things are titled property and that there's agreements in place titled properly. Uh, very common with real estate. And with real estate, the remember, there's a deed that says who owns the property. And then if it's commercial property, investment property, or something of that nature, multifamily property, that may be in an entity like an LLC for liability purposes, or an S corporation or something of that nature, you would then be leaving the shares to someone else. So you want to make sure that the titling of the assets coordinated with the entity that owns it, and that the your will or your business agreement deals with those types of, of property. Um, also, you want to be careful of uh, in specifics. And there are some other traps to be aware of when you're transferring assets or changing beneficiary designations on life insurance. But one specific one is S corporations. S corporations have a lot of rules that apply to individuals. And um, there's a limited number of shareholders. There are certain uh, entities that cannot be shareholders of an S corp. An LLC cannot be a shareholder of an S corp. Um, an S corp could own shares in an LLC, but it's gotta be people. So you can't just leave property to, into trust, for example, like your business and trust for your kids to run, um, without some special provisions that allow you to not break what's called the S election because S corporations are just an election and S, uh, subchapter S in the internal revenue code, it's a corporation, but the rules then wouldn't apply and there may be adverse tax consequences. Um, so in wrapping up, I just wanted to say that, uh, that's my little tidbit for today. I know I talk about business planning a lot and, uh, um, that's what I do. I'm a business lawyer, 
So I work with people helping them write all their agreements and uh, stay on top of their affairs. I prefer to do it on a monthly flat fee retainer basis. You can learn about my fractional general counsel services on my website. I'll put a link in the comments uh, under the video and you can check that out. Always available for a free 30 minute Zoom consult if you want to um, talk about any issues, but you'll find that your lawyer will be much more effective if they know your situation. Same with your estate plan. I mean, if you, you, have a, you need your estate plan redone and you don't have a relationship with your lawyer anymore, uh, you're going to want to go to a new attorney and it's going to take him or her a little time to get to know everything. I've been in situations where I'm doing business planning, I'm working on something for the business. And in the middle, I discover something that, uh, you know, uh, ownership of a building that's not correct, doesn't coordinate with what the client's trying to do. And I have to unravel everything and we got to redo their estate plan and rework everything. So it's really important to have someone that you trust, that you like to work with, uh, on a, you know, on a reasonable basis that uh, is has has a, a finger on the pulse of your business and your life and your family and what you're trying to accomplish. Generally, hiring lawyers on an ad hoc basis doesn't give you the best result, right? It's like if you don't have an attending physician who knows all the things that go on in your body and your life and your health and all those types of things, hard to make recommendations to um, keep you healthy and maintain your health, right? If you just picked a doctor out of a book every time I went to a different doctor each time, you wouldn't get any kind of coordinated health care. Law's the same way. We don't ad hoc go to different accountants every year because you'd have to provide him or her all kinds of information. They'd have to look at the balance sheet of your business, your profit and loss statement, which, which you filed in the last couple of years. Generally, that's difficult. It's difficult to change CPAs uh, midstream. People don't do that with law. law so Learn about those services and, and what I do. And uh, if you have a relationship with, a, with an attorney who's a business attorney, good attorney, ask them about that kind of a relationship. It's good for you. And it's good for your business. If you want to learn more about my practice, you can text LAW to 21000 for my digital business card. Follow the Accidental Entrepreneur on uh, all, this, all the uh, podcast platforms and follow us on social media. This is uh, October 8th, Thursday, and this has been the Thursday morning live stream. Thanks for listening in. If anybody has any questions about estate planning or titling of assets or so forth, just uh, send, send me an email to uh, mitch at buyinghackerlaw.com or you can leave comments underneath the video or contact me through my website. And enjoy the day. Enjoy the rest of the weekend.